Hi everyone, it's Peter Schiff. It is Tuesday, March 15th, 2011. And I want to spend some time today speaking about the tragedy in Japan. Now, I don't want to focus on the human tragedy, the loss of life. Uh, that's certainly paramount. But the conventional media has done a very good job of covering that angle of the story. I want to focus on the economic aspects. And there, the media has not done uh, a good job at all. There's very little understanding about uh, the economy and natural disasters, and in particular, uh, what's happening in Japan. First of all, there are plenty of uh, pundits on television who are saying, aside from the economic, uh, from the human toll, this is an opportunity for growth. This is going to be a boom uh, to the Japanese economy, because after all, they're going to have to spend a lot of money now to rebuild what's been destroyed, and it's the rebuilding uh, that creates uh, the economic growth. Now, this is complete nonsense. Henry Hazlitt uh, did a good job of disposing of this uh, in Economics in One Lesson with his broken window fallacy. But the idea that your economy is improved because you have to use resources to replace what you already had is, is sheer nonsense. I mean, yes, the Japanese are going to be very busy uh, devoting scarce resources to repairing infrastructure and replacing structures that were demolished. But those resources might have been used to create new products, new goods, new services, to build new infrastructure, to add to what they had, not simply replace what they lost. You see, the economists who think that natural disasters create a boom simply look at the jobs that they see that are created uh, by the disaster, but they don't see the jobs and the economic activity that doesn't take place because those resources were now used to repair damage done by a natural disaster. I mean, if we think that an earthquake is, so, is such a good thing for the economy, we, we, can, we can replicate an earthquake without having to suffer any loss of lives. We could randomly select a city in the United States to destroy. Uh, we can give the residents ample warning to clear out. And then we can send the Air Force in and we can car carpet bomb the place and we can reduce it to rubble. And then we can have all the economic benefits of an earthquake without any of the uh, human suffering uh, that goes along with it. And, you know, maybe uh, as an added bonus for all the residents whose homes are destroyed, we can assure them that we will replace their homes with newer, nicer homes with more amenities uh, so everybody would end up being a winner. I mean, the whole thing is complete nonsense. Uh, also, you know, let me go into the reaction in Japan, because as soon as the uh, the earthquake hit and, you know, the Bank of Japan was out there reassuring uh, everybody that they would supply liquidity, that they would come to the rescue, why do we regard central bankers uh, as uh, there to rescue the economy from a tragedy? All they have is a printing press. All they can do is create inflation. Creating inflation doesn't solve problems. It compounds them. It makes them worse. You know, ironically... What Japan should be doing, what the Bank of Japan should be doing right now is the opposite of what it is doing. It should be raising interest rates and contracting money supply. Why? Because the earthquake is a, 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 a contraction event in, in Japan. Output is being reduced. Factories and plants have been idolized. So there is less production. Resources need to be diverted uh, from consumption to rebuilding. And so the economy contracts, money supply needs to contract too. In fact, when the Federal Reserve was first established in 1913, the primary reason it was created was to establish an elastic money supply. And what they meant by an elastic money supply was a money supply that would expand as the economy expanded and then contract when the economy contracted. Right. If you read if you read the original act, this this is what it said. I'm not making this up. Now I know this is the exact opposite of what the Federal Reserve does today, but that's because everything it's doing today is wrong, and the Bank of Japan is making the same mistakes. The reason that we need higher interest rates in Japan and a contraction is because if fewer goods are being produced, if you don't contract the money supply, then prices are going to rise because you're going to have more money chasing fewer goods. So you have to let money supply contract. And the reason they need higher interest rates is Japan needs to devote its resources to rebuilding infrastructure. Now, where are those resources going to come from? They have to come from a reduction in current consumption. So we need more savings in Japan and less spending. 
and higher interest rates would achieve that result because that would create an incentive for Japanese to save even more and that would free up resources uh, to leave uh, a consumption and go towards uh, rebuilding uh, what has been lost. Also, if they did that, the Japanese yen would rise in value much more than it has risen. In fact, the Japanese government intervened, or the Bank of Japan, to drive the yen down, to prevent the yen from rising. Japan needs a stronger yen, because a stronger yen will reduce the cost of rebuilding the infrastructure. If the yen were allowed to surge, then oil prices would drop sharply. Remember, they're going to have to import a lot more oil now with all these nuclear power plants off not line. Copper prices would plunge, steel prices, concrete prices. It would be a lot cheaper for Japan uh, to repair the damage if they were paying for things with a stronger yen. Instead, the government is printing yen, debasing the currency, and driving up the price of all the things that they need to buy. You know, they're trying to preserve the low exchange rate of the yen versus the dollar so they can protect exports to America. Well, it's not exports that they need right now. It's going to be imports. They need to focus on the domestic economy, and repairing the damage is a lot better when your currency is strengthening, not when your currency is, is weakening. But, you know, we actually have economists I hear on television saying that, hey, we need to make sure that the Bank of Japan intervenes just in case consumers retrench. They need to stimulate. We need consumers to retrench. Where else will Japan get the resources uh, to do what it needs to do? And, of course, one of the ways that they could get the resources is selling some of their treasuries. They're sitting at about $900 billion worth of treasuries. If you think of these treasuries as a rainy day fund for the Japanese, it's pouring. Why not use that fund? But so far, they've indicated that they're not going to sell treasuries. In fact, they're going to buy even more because as all the uh, in losses, a lot of these losses are insured, so a lot of insurance companies are going to have to pay claims to Japanese uh, people who are insured, Japanese companies. These claims have to be paid in yen, but a lot of the insurance companies are holding non-yen assets uh, in, in their portfolios, which need to be re liquidated in order to remit proceeds back to Japan. And so this is an event that would naturally drive up the yen. Now, if the Bank of Japan wants to stop the yen from rising, they're going to have to print money. They're going to have to buy up all these dollars. And so what's really going to happen is while Japan is trying to rebuild their own economy, they're going to simultaneously try to prop up our economy. They can't do both. What they need to do to pay for this, if the Japanese government is going to increase its expenditures in, in the aftermath of this natural disaster, the best way for the Japanese government to fund those expenditures would be to tap into that rainy day fund to sell those U.S. treasuries instead of issuing Japanese government bonds and going deeper into debt, why not liquidate some of these low-yielding U.S. treasuries that are losing value every day? In fact, the main reason that they won't do that is because they're afraid of collapsing the dollar and tanking the U.S. economy, which shows that if the, if the Japanese can't tap in to their rainy day fund when it's pouring out, what good is it? When can they ever tap into it? What is the purpose of having almost a trillion dollars in foreign reserves if when you have a disaster like that, you can't spend any of those reserves because you're so afraid of destroying the value of those reserves because you're going to bring down the U.S. dollar? Now, what I think is going to happen, though, I think the Japanese are going to look at this. They've been following this Keynesian model for 20 years, and it's been 20 years of disaster. I think they're going to look at the situation and say, you know what? We can't do this. You know, it's more important to repair our own economy than to prop up the U.S. economy. They'll understand that it's not about exporting to a bunch of Americans who can't afford their products. They have real uh, needs in their own country that demand a lot of resources, that demand their savings. And I think they're going to back away. Meanwhile, quantitative easing is supposed to end over the summer. Well, Japan is the second largest holder of treasuries uh, after China. And, of course, the biggest holder now is the Federal Reserve, which is buying 70% of all net new uh, treasury offerings. If Japan is not going to be buying anymore, and, in fact, if they wise up and they start selling treasuries, who's going to buy? If the Fed steps out and Japan becomes a seller, how's the government going to borrow all this money? It can't. It can't do it unless interest rates skyrocket and people pull their money out of the stock market, out of the real estate market, stop spending, and all the resources that we have are loaned to the government so we can keep spending. 
What I think they'll happen is none of that will happen. QE3 is coming, QE4, because the Fed is going to keep on printing, and that means more inflation and a weaker U.S. economy. Anyway, take care for now, everybody.